I kind of put that into you? Yeah, I, I certainly was raised that way. Um, fighting is a selfish sport. You have to come first. I was lucky to have a father like I had who raised me that way. So I, I always pretty much put myself first. And mm -hmm. I, I never really did otherwise. Um, and I saw how beneficial that was to my life as a whole. Mm -hmm. I, I would never have what I have now if a woman was in charge of my destiny. <laughs> this no is right. I got a, I got another question here. This is a $10 super chat. Thanks brother. Uh, it says, what's your payment structure for cam girls? Do you get a percentage or pay them hourly and keep it all? That's a good question. That is and, a good question. Uh, I should say I have a course on this. Go buy it. So I should say. <laughs> but, um, uh, it depends. It depends on the unique situation with the girl. It, it can all work out. It depends how it goes. Um, but in my experience, girls aren't motivated by money. Women are not money hungry like a man is. They're not money motivated. Like money is a way to motivate them, but there's far better ways to do it. And I think if you, you can motivate a woman with attention and with love and with making her feel special and affection far more than you can with money. If you were to go to a girl and say, look, you know, we'll do a business deal, blah, 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 blah. Like, look, okay, let's, okay, let's, let's take away from Cam. Let's look at street pimps. Mm -hmm. And one of my, one of my best friends, he's on my Instagram. He has a, He's, a, he's literally a street pimp. That's what he does. He's a fucking million dollar Lamborghini from street girls. Mm -hmm. And you ask a street pimp how much the girl keeps. Zero percent. The, the pimp gets it all. And people are like, why would a girl work and give all her money away? So, well, it's because she wants the attention and validation of that man. That's why. So mm -hmm. it, that's, that's the perfect example of how it's very little to do with money and, and percentages and all that thing. It's about, I want this man to be happy with me. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the, the game comes in. But you're only going to pull that off if she respects you immensely. Mm -hmm. And she's only going to respect you immensely if you respect yourself immensely. If you treat yourself like shit, why is she going to treat you any better? You know? I think a lot of guys presume that if you are a pimp, digital or otherwise, that that girl is in some way dependent on you. Um, like, do you, would you say that your girls are, I mean, are any of them on drugs or anything like that? I mean, do they have to, um, did, are they dependent upon you for anything other than maybe attention? No, oh, I absolutely, I, I would actually absolutely disagree with that. And that's a common conception mm -hmm. because if, if you have girls on the street and they're addicted to drugs, cause that's the, what everyone says, oh, he gets them hooked on drugs. That means they become a drug addict and that means they need money for drugs. So how can you trust her to bring you all the money if she needs drug money? Mm -hmm. You can't. Maybe you'll get a girl on the street because she want because she initially wants drug money. But the first thing a pimp's going to do is clean her up because otherwise she has a habit and she ain't worried about work. She's worried about her habit and she's be getting money. She ain't gonna give it to you. She's gonna keep some and all this garbage. So you don't want her dependent on anything else. Mm -hmm. It really is just a matter of. And also, you can't force someone to do anything over any serious period of time. Whether it's a street girl or a webcam girl, if they want to leave and they have the ability to make their own money, what's stopping them leaving? Right. They're helping them just going out the next day and making money by themselves. Just going and doing it. Yeah. Well, I, I would, I would presume that most of the girls that work for you don't really have the know how to do anything other than to be flirtatious and to be, you know, on camera all the time. I obviously, I don't, I would say they probably don't know how to set up a website and how to do it themselves. I think one of the things that Instagram and Snapchat does is it makes it almost too easy for, for girls to actually set up their own, you know, sort of pimping themselves their own digital prostitution in that in that respect uh, in, my, in my view in my view many even even in that angle girls don't want to do it on their own mm -hmm. they want that male support and also they want that validation that what they're doing is a woman is so much happier to do that kind of thing if there's a man at the end of it all who goes who gives a shit what other people think of you you're mine i love you mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is still something that triggers in them that they feel a bit guilty or, you know, there's still something about it that bothers them. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you if, you, if you see a girl with a premium Snapchat and she's got fuck loads of guys messaging her and she's on Twitter and she's advertising it and she's happy as fuck, it's only because there's a dude dick in her right. Mm -hmm. If she didn't have a man, she wouldn't be content doing that. That's, that's mm -hmm. the reality of the situation. It's the whole dynamic of, of we can talk about it in a web sphere, but even I, I always go back to the street because it's the most raw version there's always been pimps and people have always said, well, what's the pimp's role? Why would you need a pimp? And the reality is because it makes the woman feel better about what she does. This is the reality of it. You know, she feels happier doing what she does when she has a man to report to in some sense. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just a, the natural dynamics of uh, a pimp. The pimp game is just gender roles, hyper 
the man, the woman, subservient. It's just hyper gender roles, just super extended to the point where the woman's just like, I have to obey to please this man. I will do as this man says. He's the only man I really, truly love. But it's just, it's just, it's just an extension of that. Mm -hmm. It's just playing on the natural human nature of, of, of people. I, you know, it's interesting you should say that because I think that a lot, and this has been my experience from when I was writing the first book and actually when I was, was writing, uh, not even on my blog, but all the way back when I was a moderator on SoSwap is there are, I, I remember reading like the game, right? And I remember uh, reading some of the stuff like Mystery Method was doing and all fastest seduction and and that kind of stuff at the time. And I remember being able to sort of make the connection between like the psychology that I was learning at the university at that time and what it was that these guys were doing because I was studying behavioral psychology then. And it was fascinating to me because pretty much what you've broken down, I could probably dissect that in 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 psychological terms, but we kind of have this natural understanding of it or we have this kind of instinctual feel of of what you know what the dynamics between a conventionally masculine dominant male is and what a, a submissive passive feminine female is uh one, one thing i and this actually this would be a, a question myself is what do you think about pickup artistry would you would you call yourself a pickup or have you ever considered yourself a pickup artist no i won't um First thing, before I answer that question, there's a guy here who asked a question, Fahid, Fahid sure. Bob, something. Yeah, yeah, we can do that I, if you want to read it. Yeah, I sell a few courses. I sell a course on how to get girls because I believe I've invented a system that makes it quick and easy for absolutely everybody. So I met a system on how to get girls. And I do sell a webcam course. Mm -hmm. Complaining when they says, well, why, how can you sell a cam course to complain about the decline of the West? I can't fix the West. And it's not my prerogative to fix the West. I'm an observant. I've observed the problems with the West. If there's a whole bunch of men spending billions of dollars on chicks, if I can get a percentage of it, I don't see why I shouldn't do that. I don't have any moral obligation against doing that. And that's my short answer. Mm -hmm. But in regards to being a pickup artist, I have never considered myself a pickup artist for two reasons. One, I rarely actually approach. And I'll, I'll approach a girl if she's a 10. And when I say 10, I mean a real 10. I have a load of guys go, she's a 10. And I look and I go, bro, that's not a 10. My 10 is 10. I'm talking about 2 million Instagram followers, like 10. So I'll approach a 10. Otherwise, I don't really approach that often. It's not really, it's not, it's not like I'm not a day game guy. I don't go out and chase every chick I see, and sit around the mall waiting for them to walk past me. I'm not that dude. I'm busy. I got shit. Mm -hmm. so now, like, now, just w quickly to interrupt you here, I, I apologize for this, but it wasn't but a few months ago that you were like dating some like super hot ass chick who was like had some sort of, uh, was she a model or was she somebody who was just like an Instagram model or something like that? Yeah. So what Instagram, was that all about? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's, she was on, ended up on Dan Bilzerian's boat and everything. <laughs> I, think I, sent you, I think I sent you the inbox as the first thing. Hey, you don't care about me. You, 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 you don't, you don't message me. And then she tried to go all away with Dan as if I'm going to give a fuck. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, this is what I mean. So if there's a girl on that level, I'll approach her. But in general, I don't, I don't really, really approach. And another thing that I, I do is that, and this is why I teach in my course as well, a lot of pickup guys, I'm about to rip into Roosh in a second. So if you're a Roosh. Okay, yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> but if, 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 if you're a lot of pickup guys, their whole life is get a girl, fuck a girl, get a girl, fuck a girl, get a girl. I, I am actually go beyond that. And I know with my social media, I look like that guy. I just want to fuck lots of girls. I believe in being respected and loved and taken care of. And I like genuine relationships with girls. I would much rather have one or two girls who would wait for me through a prison stretch than a whole bunch of random hoes. So what I teach is far more about, very similar to what you teach, isn't about just getting a girl and fucking her. How do you have a happy relationship where she genuinely respects you? How do you have a relationship where she will stand by you? How do you have a genuine love and the genuine, uh, the genuine gender dynamics in the relationship to make sure she's happy and you're happy? So I've never been a pickup guy because I've never wanted a hundred. I've slept with a lot of girls, but I've never been the guy who goes, I need to fuck 10 girls a week. Otherwise, I don't give a shit. I I'm happy to get a one good one and retain her. What I'm good at is getting a, a beautiful woman and retaining her mm -hmm. and then getting another one and retaining her. And I'll have five or six at once. Spin. All of which. So spinning <laughs> plates, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much exactly what I was saying. Beautiful. And they all genuinely love me. 
And they'll, uh, so that's what I'm interested in much more than going out fucking a girl. Going out fucking, I could do that, but it's not really my thing, to be honest. I, I'm much happier knowing that if I have a problem, I can call a girl and say, look, I need you to fly here and do this. Right. And they, okay, anything you want. I, that's what I want. And that's what I teach in my course as well. Like, yeah, getting the girl, fucking the girl is the first 10% of the game. Having a girl tattoo your name on you, on her, yep. is the other 90%. And how many girls, how many girls have their, have your name on them right now? 22. I've got 20. I'm on 22. 22. Oh man. There's got, there's guys watching this right now is going to run into one of those and go, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure a couple of them are covered up by now. It must oh, be. that's funny. It's been a while. Yeah. I mean, gosh, that's, that's something that you want to talk about ownership. There you go. Well, uh, well, thing, I, I just say to the girl, look, are we going to be together forever? She goes, well, I hope so. I said, well, I don't believe in hopes. It's yes or no. She goes, well, I, well, I want to. I said, well, if you genuinely want to, then why wouldn't you get a tattoo? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think a lot of, and, and I, I'm going to get to this other question here in just a second. So bear with me. But, um, I think a lot of guys, a lot of guys think that I wrote the books that I wrote so that it would help pick up artists yeah. and does it? Sure. It can, it can be, be part of that, but I didn't write it specifically for the pickup artists to do that. Right. A lot of it was inspired by conversations that I had with some, some pickup artists. Um, so am I, a, am I a proponent of PUA? Um, in a way, yes. In a way, no. Uh, it just depends on, on what it is we're talking about. Uh, is Rolo Tomasi a MGTOW? No, I'm not a MGTOW, but I agree with a lot of what they have to say. I think that they have the analysis absolutely almost 100% perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think that I, I only disagree with their solutions. I, I don't agree with their, or I don't disagree with their analysis. I think they, like I said, they got that right. Uh, am I an MRA? Well, if you listen, if you read any, any of my haters on, on, uh, on Twitter, you, people will, I, I think that's funny. Cause like the first thing, the first criticism that anybody has when, when you throw something like, like a uh, red pill awareness at someone, they think you're an MRA that, cause that's the only designation that they know. That's the easy name that they, they can remember. Oh, you're just an MRA. Am I an MRA? No, I'm not an MRA. It's certainly not. I think MRAs get it wrong when it comes to egalitarian equalism. I think mm -hmm. that they still want to have an equal, uh, they they want to be more perfected feminists is what they want to be. They want to have uh, rather than having a complementary relationship with a woman, they they believe in the lie of feminism, which is that we can have an egalitarian uh, relationship with women. I'd say that's an, that's an impossibility simply because there's no such thing as equality. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I disagree with them. Although I would say that they're in in some senses they have at least made they have at least raised awareness to. Uh, to red pill topics. So I, I got to at least give them that. So is there some bad and there's some good? Yeah, there's some bad and good. Uh, am I a trad con? Absolutely not a trad con, but I understand why certain aspects of morality exist because I understand the latent purpose behind that. You know, when guys say, well, you know, I'm not going to have sex until I get married, you know, the premarital sex thing, or I, I understand why you want to do that. I just don't think that that is, a, I think that's an impracticality in this yeah. day and age right now. I think that a lot of trad cons believe in this man up script. That is exactly the same thing as feminism. It's mm -hmm. we, we need men to man up. We're going to tell men to man down all the time, but, we want to tell them to man up when we need them to. Like I was talking to you about how, how masculinity is a, it's a convenience to them. It's like, they want the parts that are, are convenient and that are uh, helpful to them. And they don't, and they, anything else is, is toxic. And we're getting to the point, I think right now where uh, a lot of, a lot of SJWs simply want to call masculinity at, no matter what it is, they want to say masculinity itself is toxic. And I think we're coming to that point very yeah. soon. And what I would say is, you know, tra Mr. Tradcon, what do you, what are you going to do about that? You know, how are you going to, Im how are you going to give men authority if they have, you expect responsibility? Well, there needs to be an exchange there. And why don't they have that authority as well? That would be my, my, my saying for them. Now, the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because I got this question here. It says, uh, Rolo, please speak to the coming societal shift, uh, like, a hip trend towards men being red pill slash MGTOW, which started as an underground movement and is now growing into the mainstream. Um, did, let me ask you this. Do you think that red pill awareness and I mean, you, you just got, you just got done with uh, Alex Jones yeah. uh, talking about issues of masculinity. Uh, I would say that there's definitely a, an interest in it, but do you think that it's going to go mainstream? Do you think that it's coming? It's going to be hip 
or you know trendy to be red pill or to be MGTOW or to be MRA or any of those you know classifications I just I, I don't really, I'm not sure. The problem with, with red pill, true red pill, is that you have to take on a whole bunch of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can look outside of the dating sphere and understand that people uh, absolve personal responsibility every chance they get. Mm -hmm. If you want to be truly red pill, you have to be personally responsible for a lot of shit. You've got to be like, okay, I understand how women work, so I need to get in fantastic shape. I need to get my finances together. I need to have an iron frame. I need to not chase a chick if she gives me attitude. I have to you know, tell a girl to fuck off for the smallest indiscretions or I'm not going to train her to behave herself around me. you got to have a lot of mental discipline to truly understand red pill. And I don't think people have mental discipline. That's mm. the truth. Yeah. I think people, a lot of people lack it. And this is why blue pill exists. If you believe in the fairy tale, you don't need mental discipline. I don't need to get, I don't need to get in shape. I don't need to be a man of value. I don't need to, X, Y, Z, all these hard things because, oh, because I'll meet a girl and we'll just click. And it's just, I think it's just a lot of it's just absolving responsibility. Mm -hmm. To take our red pill mindset, you have to be responsible for your shit. Yeah, you blue, pill, blue pill thinking is magical thinking is what it is. Yeah, it's magical thinking. And I mean, I, I completely understand why I get away with what I get away with. I'm a millionaire fucking athlete. Well, duh. But... You know, so I'm not when I like even my course what I sell, I have people who say to me, why is a millionaire athlete teaching us how to get girls? Well, it's easy for him. No, because even like your book, it teaches you the rules to the game. I look at things from a chess. I was raised in a chess family. My dad was a chess master. So mm -hmm. from in a, on a chess board, even if you're losing, you can still make the best possible moves to give yourself the best possible position. So even if you're not in the best physical shape, even if you're not a millionaire, whatever, you still need to know the rules to the game to make the best possible moves to get the best possible outcome. Mm -hmm. You can still do fantastically, and there's not a person alive who would read your book and not do better or buy my course and not do better because we're teaching them the rules to the game. Most people out here don't even know the fucking rules. And they're just moving pieces at random and wonder why their whole life's fucked up. It's right. Like, oh, or, or they jump oh. on the uh, success porn train and they hold pep rallies rather than actually giving anybody any kind of actionable information. Exactly. Yeah. And, and another thing with women, I mean, one thing we did talk about the PUA, I do actually think, I mean, I've had a few guys inbox me saying, what should I do? I'm 18, 19. I do think there is an important period in a man's life where you do need to sleep with a lot of women. And I don't think it's, so I think in the modern world nowadays, if you want to find a good woman, you ain't going to find a good woman on your first try. I, I really believe, like, I, I, I understand the game inside out, and I've fucked some girls and afterwards thought, you know what? She's just more hassle than she's worth. She's already broken, or she's just a fucking pain in the ass, or she has, you know? You, sometimes, I, say, I use apples as an example. If I were to say to you, go out there and find the best apple you can, and, you only, and you'd only viewed two apples, well, what do you know about apples? If you if you if you have a hundred apples to choose from, you're going to come back with a really good one. Mm -hmm. So people go to me, Tate. How the fuck do you get a ten with your name tattooed? Who lets you cheat? Who does anything you say? It's like, well, I fucked five hundred girls to find her. So okay. that's part of it. It's not just who I am. It's also there's a numbers game to this element as well. Mm -hmm. So I do think as a man, you also have to be in in thirty four years ago, not so much, but nowadays, if you want to find a quality woman. You're gonna have to tear through some shitty chicks to get one. Mm. And this is why I teach, I, when guys say to me, Tate, you're declining the West because you're teaching guys to fucking dump girls in your course. I'm saying if you wanna be happy as a man and you wanna have a, a good relationship nowadays, you better learn to pick up, sleep with, and you gotta get learn to tear through some chicks. Mm. Because if you're just gonna settle down with the first girl you sleep with, you're gonna, I guarantee you a divorce. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. And this is what my course is about. It's about how to sleep with them, how to test them afterwards if they're worthwhile, and how to retain them if they are. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you have to do in the in the modern world. This is the only reality of it. And, and this is why I say to people, so I don't agree with the uh, the MGTOW. I don't agree with none of that stuff. I think a man needs a woman to be happy. A but lot. Of, I was just going to say, is like, uh, just to, to stop you there real quick, I, I, I think that, and I'm just going to play devil, I'm going to play MGTOW's advocate here is a lot of guys will say that if the the more women you expose yourself to the more apples so you can you know get a better apple whatever um the more women you expose yourself to the more chances you have to get me too just like you did uh, the more ch the more chances you're going to have to uh, to get yourself into more trouble. I think that's, I mean, I, I honestly, I think this is almost kind of a cop out, but they're not wrong. 
I mean, you are opening yourself up to more potential to get me too. And I mean, shit, we even call it me too. It's a verb now, you know? Yeah. So what, what do you, what would you say to somebody who says, you know, it's too risky? It's risk. It's risk versus reward. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a risk, but you can mitigate those risks by understanding the risk and being careful with how you text and email and be careful about it. But there's a reward to it. I'll tell you what, bro. If I walk in the club with my three girlfriends, I'm the, I haven't got to spend a penny. I'm the richest guy in that club. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, who the fuck is this guy? With all those chicks, people are just like, like staring, like who the fuck is this dude? All these chicks hanging off him. I'm the richest guy in the club. So there's risk and there's reward. If you wanna, I, I'm always the guy, I'm a risk taker. I'm a fighter. Risk, mm -hmm. fighting's the ultimate risk reward. You're risking getting knocked out and looking like a dickhead in front of everybody. Or you're risking getting knocked out and never waking up just for the reward of, of one of these. So I'm a, you're a risk taker by nature if you're a fighter. So if you, if, you, if you want the reward, which I think every man instinctively wants, if you want a wife who truly loves you and truly respects you, you have to take the risk. That's the reality. The amygdala guys are right, but what they're doing is they're running away from the, from the risk. Well, that's yeah. fine. But you could say you could use the same logic for opening a company. If I open a company, I might lose my money. Yeah, you might. You might be a millionaire. So it's, it's, it's just like it's the risk reward that you have to take it on board. What yeah. I would say is if you're a MGTOW, what you need to do is understand the rules to the game. You're putting out fantastic content. Like your, your content is far more in depth than mine. My course is very much like a step-by-step -step process to make sure that every dude can, can fuck a new girl every week, how to test them and how to retain them if he wants to. But between what you and I put out there, there's not a guy alive who couldn't get a healthy relationship, tear through some chicks and then find one who actually truly treats them the way he wants to be treated and be a happy person. I don't think, I don't think that's impossible for anybody. Do you, never that you, you probably get this quite a bit though. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of dudes that will, will, th and you know, here, here's your chance to advertise, but um, a lot of guys will say, well, you know, Tate, you got a million bucks. You're a millionaire. You've already got three chicks or the, or the only reason that the girls are hanging on to you is because you've got a lot of money. Yeah. Well, what would you say to guys like that? Well, I would say two things. Firstly, the reason I have a lot of money is because I had a lot of girls because I started my cam business and right. I had, some right. Money. They all dependent on them. Okay. So I had some money, but I wasn't a millionaire. You know, I was a fighter, but I, I was living a very average, normal life. Fighting doesn't, kickboxing doesn't pay like boxing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was living a pretty standard life in a standard house with a standard car. And I always had girls. In fact, I would say I did better back then than I do now. Because now when you have money, girls expect a lot. Like back then I could go to a girl, oh, let's just meet up for a coffee or something. Now when you have money, girls are like, oh, I see you're in Dubai. Fly me to Dubai. They're always trying to get something out of you. Mm -hmm. And that pisses me off, and I don't give girls anything out of principle. So I, my biggest problem now is I have girls trying to sugar dad me, and I refuse to do it. So I feel like sometimes I did better back then because I, I didn't have those expectations I, I have now. Anyway, that's the first thing. And the second thing is I know a whole bunch of dudes with money who are not happy with their female relationships. You see it time and time again. People richer than me, you know, a couple million dollars, whatever. There's billionaires out there whose wives are cheating on them and divorcing them. So it's nothing to do with money. It's to do with how a woman respects you. If I lost every penny today, and I know this is a big, this is a big thing for a red pill guy to say, I know my girls wouldn't leave. And I know, I know that sounds crazy, but I know if I went to jail, they'd be there every fucking Friday at visitation. I know it. And I know it because for so many years, I've been in absolute control of the frame of this relationship. I, I, I have complete understanding of my relationship. There's never been anything else. Mm -hmm. So I understand it. So when people go, oh, it's just about money. That's another cop out. Yeah. That's a complete cop out. That's one, of the, that's one of the reasons why I tell guys, it's like a, a lot of guys think that they're, they, they tend to focus on one, uh, too much on one of three things. Either it's looks, it's game, or it's affluence, it's money, status, blah, 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 right? And they think that the only way to get a girl is to have a lot of money, right? Yep. And in some instances, maybe that's true because you can go and pretty much get any prostitute you want if you have the money to pay for it, right? Yep. But there's plenty of rich men whose wife, whose good looking wives cheat on them with a pool boy, yep. okay? Yep. Or they want to, right? Uh, then there's like, you know, there's guys like me. So when I was in my 20s, uh, you know, I had like two nickels to rub together. I was living in a one bedroom studio apartment in North Hollywood. And I had, I was probably as poor as I'd ever been in my life. And I had women coming to me 
to have sex with them because I was, you know, I was junior rock star, right? I played, I, I had the look that they wanted. I was playing the character they wanted to see. Um, and then, so I had them coming to me to, to, to fool around, right? Uh, then I've got the guys who are going to say that, well, and then it's all about looks, right? It must be just how you, how you look. And I will say that, you know, there's definitely something to that. You've got to be in shape and you've got to have at least something that is arousing for that woman. And, and I think a lot of guys underestimate the power of having a look, you know, like I have this great post called have a look. And I based it on this video that Adam Carolla did. And he was talking about how guys have to sort of play this character, like whatever that girl is looking for, whether she wants the emo guy or she wants a tough brother from the streets or she wants uh, an MMA fighter or she wants, uh, you know, that that's that's her thing. Right. That's that's what she's into. Maybe she wants the rock star. Maybe she wants the creative artsy type, that kind of guy, the guy who's playing that. But there's still that look that goes along with that. And, and it's not, fa it's not the fat guy. Look, okay. It's the guy who at least has some sort of muscular definition. I think that there's an involved aspect of, of women's arousal that centers on men's looks, yeah. but is that all there is? No, that is not all there is. Um, is it game? Yes, definitely. It's uh, the, I think game is probably of, of the three game is probably the most important one. So at least you understand the rules of the game so that you know how to play that so Absolutely. that you have the kind of personality and you have the kind of, uh, you know, you, you invested in yourself to become the best version of yourself that you possibly can. And knowing how to use that, knowing what, you know, knowing certainly pickup artist and, you know, pickup art PUA game, definitely, but also understanding why it works. Why does chick crack work? Why does amuse mastery work? Why does neck neg hits work? Why do and being able to do that is one thing, but also having us, so I think that having all three of those things, which you appear to have is, the is the holy grails to have you know have three if you can but yeah. have two if you can't have three always have two and if you can only have one have game have game I, above I, everything else i agree man like i, I there's there's plenty oh we've got a green thing come up here uh, that's right i'll i'll get to it <laughs> oh, um, well, actually we can we can here i'll we'll, we'll get to you go ahead finish your thought no but yeah game is the most important thing money I, i'll tell you something now from having a little bit of money girls don't give a fuck I mean, like if, if you pull up in a Lambo, a girl, if you, if you pull up in a Lambo and a girl sees it and then you go and approach her, it will buy you 10 seconds for 10 seconds. She'll let you talk to her and go, well, who's this guy? But if after that you're boring or you're rude or you, she doesn't like you, then she's going to tell you to fuck off just the same. No girl sits there and goes, I don't like this guy. I think he's aggressive and I don't like his attitude. And I don't just something about him. I don't like. But he has a Gucci T-shirt, so I better go fuck him. It just it just doesn't happen. Like it, it it helps, but it's only a small part of it. There's still a whole element which is involved, and that is game. I tell you this to all my guys. Like everyone who's bought your book has given you positive reviews, regardless of their status in life. Everyone who's bought my course has given me positive reviews. I've had five foot two overweight dudes with no money say to me, "Look, I know I'm never going to get a ten. But I'm doing a lot better than I did before I had your course. It's the same thing. You just got to play the cards you're dealt. You got to play the cards you're dealt the best you can. Yeah. And that's, there's, that's it. there's a, I, I think uh, this escapes a lot of guys when it comes to the game is there's a contextualization of, of, of game itself. Like you have to use exactly. You have to use the utilities and the, the, the resources and the talents that you have, like maximize play to your strengths, right? You know, Absolutely. it's, it's, uh, un and understanding what those strengths are is sometimes difficult for guys. Like they don't understand, you know, what it is that they need to, to focus on. Now I got this guy in here. Let's see. Um, he's saying how, how, I, I think his name is Saud. He said, how to beat the, how be, how to beat nature of the women when she like to get approved from society. Uh, how do you, okay, I, I'm going to try to paraphrase what he says here. How do you beat the nature of women? How do you push past the nature of women when, uh, she gets approved from society? I think what he means is like, say in, uh, in the era of social media, women's egos have been completely, I talked about this yesterday with, with Pat, actually, um, how, uh, in, in the nature of, for the nature of women, women's nature is played to by, um, by social media, women's egos, women's se sexual market value has never been as overinflated as it is today because they have a worldwide access to attention to yeah. ego affirming attention. Yeah. If, if you, if you have, if she has a problem with her boyfriend that day, she's got a hundred guys on Instagram. Who's ready to go. Oh, it's okay, girl. I never would treat yeah. you that way. And so it really builds this false 
uh, this false sense of or a false sense of self, I think, for for women. Um, and I'll I'll answer this really quick, and you can jump in here in just a second. I I think that um, in in the communication age, or I should say the social media age, um, social media gives to women pretty much the same thing that pornography gives to guys, and it gives to like men's sexual imperative is unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. That is why pornography online is free. It's there to sedate you. It's there to to keep you preoccupied. I'm not I'm not against or for pornography. How, however you want to deal with it, it's fine with me. I'm not coming down either way. But understand it for what it is. The reason that it, there's a reason that it's free and you don't pay for it. No. Okay. Yeah, there's a reason why well, what uh, Red to or Pornhub or whatever is free. Okay. Because they because they know that it's 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 seda it's sedative for for guys. Right. It's what they're looking for. They're looking for that sexual release. Social media has the same effect for women. Women need that attention. The attention is the coin of the realm in girl world. They yeah. need to have that affirmation. They need to have their girlfriends pat them on the back. But moreover, they need to know that even if the boy that they're with right now dumps them, that they've got 10 other guys on speed dial, which in this case, it's that speed dial is Instagram and Snapchat. And that's one of the reasons why you are successful right now, because women like that. I mean, women wouldn't be doing Snapchat, premium Snapchats, or they wouldn't be cam girls, or there wouldn't be that if they didn't get off on it at some point. It has to have some sort of intrinsic value for women. And so there's that attention need. But as such, because we're in this this era of social media that feeds a woman's ego and it builds women's, I think, and falsely so, it builds women's sexual market value or their self-perception of their sexual market value. And it, and it inflates it to such a degree that it's unrealistic. And I think that a lot of the women who are doing, I mean, cause remember cam, you know, cam girls and Snapchat and Instagram, that hasn't been around there that long. I mean, when did Instagram start? Like probably eight, eight years ago, 2010. So yeah. something like, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're talking in human history. It's only existed for like 10 years, maybe if that. And so I think that the women, the girls who are in their twenties right now, who are doing this when they get to be 30 and they realize that they can't cash out of the sexual marketplace, like they thought they could. The reason that they get to that point is because they have been so over their, their egos have become so overinflated and their sexual market value has become so bloated that yeah. they think that they deserve a guy like they they might realistically be a six and they think that they deserve a guy who's a nine because yeah. they think that they're a nine as well, because everyone for the last 10 years has told them that they're a nine and that that's, that's how they should, should think about things. And then they find that in real life, they're not really a nine. There may be a six. And so they have to, they have to, they're in for a very rude awakening. That's why the reason when we were talking about the thought audit, uh, I think that what's going to happen is even the girls who are, you know, not paying their taxes or, you know, guys want to hit back against that. I think all the guys really need to do is wait. You just need to wait until, until they hit their, what I call the epiphany phase, right around 29 to 31 years old. And they're trying to cash out of the sexual marketplace or, you know, we like to call it the cock carousel, right? They're trying to, to get themselves uh, out of that system so that they can get with the beta and then they'll find, then they'll find that the guys that they, that are available to them are either stupid or they're boring or they're not as fun or exciting as the guys who are giving them attention back when they were in their twenties. And so I think a guy's question here is how do you push past that? How do you to deal with that? How do you um, like for, for women who think they're, a, they think they're a nine, but they're real, realistically maybe a seven. Like, so how do you, what would you tell this guy? Well, what, what I teach, let me do a bit of a plug here. My course, if you guys are watching, I'm going to type the motherfucking link right now. But um, go, go ahead. <laughs> but in my course, because I in my course, I talk about this for a good hour. So in my course, I talk about how male attention is hyperinflated. So there it is, take shinkai.net. And I talk about how male attention is hyperinflated and women suffer, not suffer, women enjoy unlimited male attention. Mm -hmm. So how do you add value to something? Well, you make, it, you make it scarce. Gold has value because it's hard to find. If gold was everywhere, it wouldn't have value. So I teach guys to put value on their attention. And that's what my course, a good hour of my course is about how you do that. And my very basic principle is, the way I put value, the way you put value on something is to restrict it. So 
I restrict my attention absolutely. So if I'm talking to a girl and she says something semi-sarcastic to me, or if she doesn't do what I want her to do, or she won't listen to me, I'll just stop replying. I won't insult her. I won't try and convince her. I'll just stop replying, bang, just vanish. And you know what? Most of these hot girls, no one vanishes on these girls, bro. No one vanishes on these girls. <laughs> the only dude who's like, what? I gave him some sarcastic bullshit answer and he didn't text back. And before you know it, they're the one liking your Instagram picture. They're the one trying to get your attention again. And you know, you might still have to be the man and pop up again a month later or something, but they'll like your pictures, they'll watch your stories. All of a sudden they're like, this guy, because your attention is now valuable. You're the one dude who fucked with them. Every other guy is telling them they're beautiful. You're the one dude who's like, you know what? Fuck your shit, bye. And it's all about frame. This goes back to the very basics of the game. Frame. You want to put value on your attention. I say this all the time with the biggest mistake people make in relationships is that, especially busy guys, you're busy, you're working, you're doing your, you're always busy all the time. And you, you text your girl in the morning, okay, I'm having a busy day at work, love you, talk to you later. Yep. And she doesn't hear from you all day. Well, she doesn't get any attention. Whereas if she starts an argument and pisses you off, you'll take time out of the day to text her and tell her what a dumb bitch she is. Well, now she's learning how I get his attention is through negative action. Right. you got to reverse that and talk to her all the time when she's being good. And when she starts to be a dickhead, ignore her. Yes, that is that is what's called. And 